Hello, everybody. My name is Isaac, and welcome to today's live, um, our live stream. I am so excited to be here because I get to tell you about something that we've been working on for some time, a science program that is going to change the life of your kids. Now, I know that that's a, a funny way or that's a cliche to say, and even car dealerships say that. really have taken a lot of time and a lot of frustrations with a lot of science programs and, and the state of the world and things, and I'll pour that into this program. So I am so excited to be able to tell you about it today. Um, but first, before we get started, I want to begin by telling you a little bit about me just through one session of Two Truths and a Lie. Oh, yeah. So Two Truths and a Lie. I'm going to tell you three things, and you're going to have to tell me which one of those three things did not actually happen. Uh, or I do. Are you ready? Okay, I am ready, or as the kids now say, soup's ready. So, first truth or lie is I was attacked by a skunk with rabies and bitten on the face when I was a kid. That is truth or lie number one. I was attacked by a skunk with rabies. Truth or lie number two, I jumped from a moving train. This is getting tricky. And truth or lie number three is I drove a snowmobile off of a cliff. You heard it. I drove a snowmobile off cliff. So the three choices, two of those are true. Are you serious? Am I really saying that two are true and one is a lie? <laughs> Yep, that's what I'm saying, folks. So let me review them real quickly. I'll give you a moment to decide, and then we'll see where we stand. So truth or lie about me, number one, I was attacked by a skunk rabies. Truth or lie, number two, I jumped from a moving train. And truth or lie, number three, I drove a snowmobile off a cliff. I'm going to give you a second to try to decide which one of those things is a lie. Two of them are true. One of them's a lie. Now, which do you think is the lie? Me jumping off a moving vein? Oh, that was that was the second one. The first one. Which do you, which of these three do you think was, was the lie? Was was it me being attacked by a skunk with rabies? Was it me jumping from a moving train, or was it me? Driving a snowmobile off a cliff. Okay, enough with the theme song. And the answer is, the lie is jumping from a moving train. never even been on a train, so I there's no way I could jump from a moving train. So yes, that means when I was a kid, I was 12 years old and I was camping, I woke up to find a skunk that had rabies that was sitting on my chest chewing on my forehead. That's a true story. And not too many, not uh, maybe a couple of years later, I, I was also hit in the snow at night. I was driving a snowmobile and I drove it off a cliff. Thankfully, I'm okay, as you can see here. Although maybe I'm a little messed up mentally. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Okay. So let's get started. Me telling you about our new program, our new set program. But in order to tell this program, I wanted to first tell you what is so frustrating um, about science and any programs that are out there. First being with science, um, of, the, of all the subjects of science or of all the subjects in school, science is by far the most controversial the least understood and or the most misunderstood, I should say. There are so many reasons that people are turned off or misunderstand science. And in fact, and in many situations, science isn't even taught at all, the hurdles that, that are accompanied by science. 
so that's it. So with all the different uh, problems with science or perceived problems, there are a lot of people that just don't understand. But the reality is, is that one of, it is one of the most important subjects for people to learn. Um, hold on a second. Um, I keep spinning like I'm having technical difficulties. Hopefully, hopefully you all are seeing me okay and that I'm not, uh, that I don't keep spinning out on you. Okay, so let's get, let's get going. Um, let's get back into it. So, um, the reality is, is that science is one of the most important says, yes, I really did just say that. I'm not putting it above, um, above reading and things like that. But I think it is just as important as those subjects. And you'll see why. I mean, hopefully by the end of this, the end of this live video, you'll understand why. Well, um, let's see. What is science? So let me go through and explain what science really is and the misconceptions about it and how we've, how we've addressed those in our program. Ready, folks? I'm so ready. Okay, so science, most people think of science as a collection of facts, as a big, fat, fat textbook that contains a bunch of information that they have to memorize, like the life cycle of a dung beetle. And then they say to themselves, why am I, why am I ever... Um, memorizing the life cycle of a dung beetle. Uh, am I ever going to use this again? Well, that is one of the common conceptions, is that science is all about the dung beetle or the facts that, that you find in the textbook. But, but in reality, science is far more about the process of finding truth than it is about all of the facts and theories that you that are associated with it. So, uh, I mean, after all, one of the, because nowadays, the reason why it's so, why facts is important, I mean, you can just look the facts up on your phone, right? Anytime you want to know the life cycle of a dung beetle or many of the behaviors of the animal kingdom or plant kingdom or whatevs, you can just look it up on your phone. Well, the scientific method is a process for finding truth. And, and that's what gets, when I, I have spent a lot of time in schools, um, real quickly, I was a wildlife biologist uh, for quite a few years until I decided to um, choose a more career that was more family friendly, because fam family friendly, because I was always out in the field until, you know, four or five in the morning, then I wouldn't get to see my family. So I started working with schools with science curriculum and quickly realized that one of the big problems with science curriculum um, is that they focus all on facts and they, they leave out the many, the, or if they teach the scientific method, it's nothing more than a chapter or a unit. And they don't even teach that until high school most of the times. Sometimes some very adventurous fifth grade teach somewhere will teach the scientific method and they'll have and then the kids will pile into the gymnasium and they'll have a little science fair well the scientific method is much more than just learning about the different water or the different materials that will grow or a plant the materials that a plant will grow in like types of dirt right it's it's much more than what a scientist uses and I'm going to give you a list, and I want to see the surprises you. Okay, this is a bunch of things that you can do with a scientific method um, the pe that you will use daily. So number one, figuring out why the cakes you make are always so flat. <laughs> Have you ever had that problem where your cakes, or my problem is with bread. So using the scientific method, you can figure that out. Now, another one, finding out what food is making you sick. We've, we've gone through that a lot as we have several food allergies in my home. Another one, deciding which store has the best prices. Are you serious? That's the scientific method? You bet it is. Um, 
figure out <laughs> this is my favorite figuring out which child smeared poop off <laughs> uh, that's happened to us more, on more than one occasion so yes that is the scientific method try to figure out who smeared poo on the wall <laughs> um when you're trying to understand if your new diet is working out or not it may seem like it's something that you just jump on the scale but there's a lot more to it than that um also when you're shooting your phone that's not working properly so were you surprised by the stuff on that list that doesn't sound like stuff that you that they're doing research at a university through right you go to college and find and learn about problem solving that's what the scientific method really is it's about problem solving uh, it's just the steps are really similar and just have much more fancy names in the scientific method. And so that's why it's important. That's why science is much more powerful as a tool to solve problems and to learn truth than it is all that collection of knowledge, which, as I mentioned earlier, you can just look up on your phone. Uh, let's see. And another reason for understanding, and this is really important nowadays, another is this word called or this first called scientific literacy uh, i'm not sure if you've ever heard of scientific literacy but basically scientific literacy um has three kind of pillars to it at least that's the definition that i that i listen to one is scientific content and those are all the facts and theories that you learn about number two scientific practices and number three, science, and this is the important one, science as a social process, understanding how society and science interact. This couldn't be more apparent than the bombshell exploded on us called COVID-19. I, I know I brought up those words people would rather throw up than hear more, and I'm not going to get into politics or partisanship and jump on one bandwagon or the other. But I want to go through and show you why science, is, scientific literacy, or really understanding science is so important that it relates to real issues, right? There are, there are basically groups, um, the scientifically literate and the scientifically illiterate. Um, I don't really have better names than those, so sorry, you're stuck with my vocabulary. But I mean no offense if, if, if that sounds bad to you. So um, take a look at COVID-19 and the different responses that people have to it, and I'll show you why scientifically, scientifically literate people handle things so much better than the scientifically illiterate people. All right, once again, that sounds like a really bad phrase. But number one, uh, let's talk about the scientific literate response. Does not make a person that is scientifically literate or understands, really understands science and what it is, they um, do not make any immediate decisions or reactions without first doing exhaustive research on it, on what it is, and how it is in society. They also do not rely on just one person telling them what to do, but rather waits for a consensus of knowledgeable professionals. They also make sure that those experts that they are trusting are legitimate sources of good, scientifically tested information. They have to understand the best available science on COVID-19, and they are patient because they know that science takes time and is often many. Now, this last point couldn't be more apparent than today with what's going on with the COVID-19, because people are used to science just being already done. They've never seen the process played out in public before. They don't realize how long it takes, so they're impatient. They don't realize how difficult it is to come to a consensus. So, like, there's one, there's a drug out there that's been touted by some people, some professionals, by the president himself, and um, so there are sources that say that's a good drug, should be used, that's effective, and there are sources that say that is not. 
And what usually ends up happening is that they just trust the people that say what they want them to say that, uh, that lines up with their ideology about the subject. So um, that's why it's often so messy is because people just aren't used to the real science. They don't know what it takes to really learn something. And so that is the... So that basically is this is, is the scientifically literate response. Who's a, someone who is level-headed, rational to look at the evidence and make their opinion based on the evidence, not on what they want to believe. Now let's take a look at the scientifically literate response. They believe the first thing they hear on social media that aligns with their belief system. They trust only people sharing their own, own opinion. They do not research the science behind COVID-19 or the, or the spread of infectious diseases. They share this false information over social media. They use common sense in making decisions and evaluating information. Now, the reason why I said common sense is I really can't say common sense. Um, the, even the term common sense, just because Everybody uses it, and it's really not common at all. Um, people trust in the gut. They trust common sense. And then they will completely ignore the scientific evidence and facts that are behind it. So that would scientifically illiterate response to what's going on. Um, they use common sense, or I'm sorry, they do not look at the validity of the, of the sources. That is looking at the validity of their sources. There was a doctor, and this person was a legitimate doctor that came out and was touting this theory on COVID-19, and it sounded a little fishy, but a whole bunch of people jumped on board. And then everybody found out that this person was a crackpot that believed in the craziest of things. So you got to be careful about who you trust, and that would be a scientifically illiterate response. So that is why it is so important. Science is not just something, it's not just a subject that you learn in school because you're forced to, that you're never going to use again. That's the biggest misunderstanding about science. As I've said before, science is much more powerful as a tool for finding truth and not just what scientists would consider truth like um, quantum physics or something like that, you know, those deep theories that they're doing research in, in universities. But everyday things that happen in your home, you need to find out information, you need to find truth. And that's where the scientific method can. And that's where so many programs miss the mark because they put so little emphasis on those problem-solving skills and uh, through the scientific method. So that is what we were faced with when developing this curriculum is the science, this hands-on science curriculum. We were faced with a the potential of repeating what everybody else's mistakes were and just doing, you know, just doing a, a regular science curriculum based on the science standards that just taught facts and theories. And so we spent a lot of time thinking and developing and exploring and finally came up with this hands-on science curriculum, yes, fist pump, that will teach kids skills to problem solve, to be scientifically literate so that they understand how science affects the world around them, so that they make responsible decisions, and so that they can learn how to find truth around them. It's That's what this program is all about. It's not about fine facts. It's about learning, and this program will teach kids how to learn. That's why we developed it the way we did, and it's a different program, one that you're not going to find out there. And I have been so excited to actually finally get to spill the beans on this program. So now that I've told you about science, and um, let me tell you a few more, details, and uh, then we'll show you how you can become involved in our program. So the goal, let me tell you the goal of, or should be the goal of every good parent. Oh, that's going to sound bad because it's going to sound like you're <laughs> not a good parent if you don't sign up for the program. So sorry, don't 
Think like that. So the goal of every parent should be to raise scientifically literate children. We've kind of discussed what that is, um, how 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 to do that. Well, it's up to you. But let me show you what we've done in order to create a place where that can happen. Um, they will be much more prepared for the world and be able to solve problems, evaluate information, conduct scientific studies to learn new information and know how to navigate complicated relationships between science and so society. So how does a parent do this? Well, the truth of the matter is, is as I've said before, this is not a common thing. Programs just don't contain these sorts of things. So that's what created the program. Um, here's what we've done. Because, because we're kind of right out of the gates with this, we are going to start with what's called a founder group. A founder group is basically a group of families, and we're going to keep it limited, but so there will be limited enrollment. So, I no. Sorry, I'm, I hate pitching, selling stuff. So this founder group, what it's going to do is help us to um, iron out all the kinks and to put it all together in a, in a way that's understandable to, to parents to parents and kids alike, okay? So that's what this founder group is in. So it's not going to be complete at the beginning. Um, so there's going to be a big discount on it for, you know, for the founder group. So here is what the, here are the benefits of the program. So we've tried to make a very worry-free program for the parents. Um, so the don't have, you don't, you're not going to have to know science. You're not going to have to understand the scientific method. You're not going to have to understand all these scientific maths and, and lab safety and all that sort of stuff. We will teach everything. And you can go on a worry-free journey with your kids and learn all this right alongside with them. So it's a very, it's we, they will very detailed lesson plans and we'll give you all sorts of information on how to make that lesson even better by the things such as reading and writing and math. Uh, activities in this program will be hands-on. So the, much of one of the biggest, one of my biggest complaints about science class, it, and especially these days, it used to be this bad, but nowadays science class is such a textbook and worksheet dominated subject, and it really shouldn't be that way. So all of our lessons are hands-on and very friendly to the kids so that they will have fun doing that. And we've, the lessons, the, these lessons we've been teaching for a long time and we've been selling them as individual lessons for quite a while. So we know how effective they are at keeping kids, um, keeping them interested in having fun. Um, they will learn the scientific method and how to use in their everyday life. Kids are gonna be able to quote this thing up, down, backwards and forwards. Um, kids become scientifically literate. I keep saying that word. Um, we are going to have an online science fair judged by real scientists for cool prizes. Um, we're also going to have trainings for parents. So parent-only stuff that help you become a better teacher for your kids. All righty. So that's, uh, those are some of the things. If you are interested we put in the comments a link to where you can learn more about our program and how you can sign up. It is going to be awesome. And I really hope to see you on the inside of our hands-on science program. Oh, and you may be asking what it costs. Yeah, that's always an important thing. We're not those people that are going to go hide the cost. And we took a lot of time and a lot of thought. And we don't want this to be so expensive but we also trying to pay our bills. So we kind of came up with this balance. And so we are charging $7 per month. This is the discount price for our founder group. $7 per month or $7 per year, which is, if you think about it, pretty cheap. That's like the price of two coffees or one super, you know, gourmet coffee. So there you have it per month. Think about one gourmet coffee per month. Can you give that up? Or two just regular Joes. I'm sure you can. I'm sure you can give that up. 
twice per month just so that your kids can become scientifically literate. Hmm, I think that's a pretty good trade. So thanks for watching. I hope you had a very informative time and liked my craziness. And uh, I hope to see you on the inside. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.